Hello and welcome to the ECE Master's Program webinar. My name is Drew Hilton. I'm an Associate Professor of the Practice and also the Associate Director of Graduate Studies for Electrical and Computer Engineering. And I'll be telling you um, a bit about our Master's Programs today. Um, as you all probably know, Duke is a very highly ranked uh, university. University. Um, we have very productive faculty, we have many masters and PhD students, um, and we have lots of good teaching and research that goes on here. I'm going to talk a in a lot more detail about, about our curriculum, since that's what many of you as prospective master's students are likely uh, the most interested in. We have, as you may know, two master's programs, one of which is the Master's of Engineering, or MEng degree, um, and you can see here the high-level overview of that curriculum. So this has three um, graduate ECE courses where you're focusing in your technical area, two graduate technical electives, which could be in ECE or other technical fields like computer science, math, um, really any natural science, engineering, or mathematics uh, subject. It has three free electives. Again, these could be more ECE classes. Many of our students take pretty much all ECE classes but these could also be in other technical fields or other non-technical fields as appropriate. Um, at the top, you see MEng 540 and MEng 570. These are the two business fundamentals for engineers classes that are part of the MEng program. They're to develop your business experience and, and leadership skills um, to make you a slightly more well-rounded um, engineer for the business world. And then at the bottom, you see an internship or project, which is required. And that's generally done in the summer between your first and second year. For our Masters of Science, there's um, three possible paths. Almost all of our students do the coursework path that you see um, here with four graduate ECE courses. Again, as with uh, the uh, MEng, many of our students take um, almost all their courses in, in graduate ECE courses, so filling these in isn't a problem. Two graduate technical electives, as with image, these can be anything in a technical field. And then four approved electives, which um, can be whatever is appropriate to your career trajectories. If you look at the project path, um, you'll see that it's fairly similar in the requirements, but one course requirement has been replaced by um, a, a big project. Uh, this is basically a big semester um, or possibly even longer project that you do one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member. Um, it can either be a research project or a more of a development project according to your, your needs and interests, um, and it's capped off with a, a project defense. And then very few students take the thesis path, path which replaces two courses with um, a thesis. I'm going to talk um, now in a little bit more detail about the um, courses that students take in our most popular tracks. The first, um, that I'm, first two that I'm going to talk about are brought to you by the computer engineering faculty, which you see here. And um, one thing I will just note quickly about the computer engineering faculty. When I introduced myself, I said I was an associate professor of the practice. We have several of them. You see um, Tyler Bletch there. Um, myself and um, Rabia Yunus. And um, what a professor of the practice is, is it's full-time uh, regular rank faculty who are devoted primarily to teaching. And the, the three of us that I just mentioned spend a lot of our time teaching master's courses. So one thing that's fairly unique to Duke is we put our best teaching faculty on um, the master's program and really give you the highest quality educational experience we can. Our most popular concentration is software. Um, students taking this pretty much take the same three courses uh, in their first semester. Um, 550, Fundamentals of Computer Systems and Engineering. 551, C++ Programming, Data Structures and Algorithms. And 590, Theory and Practice of, of Algorithms. So um, we'll talk a lot more about 551 in a moment um, because that's a fairly unique course. Um, 550, it kind of covers a little bit lower levels of software, the interface between software and hardware, um, assembly, all that good stuff. And um, theory and practice of algorithms is kind of our own uh, take on an algorithms course. Your typical grad algorithms course is all theory. If you were to take um, the algorithms course in most CS departments, you'd basically spend the entire semester doing proofs. 
proving things is important, but being an engineering department, we want that theory to connect with practice. And so our, our class is called Theory and Practice of Algorithms because you not only prove properties of algorithms, um, but you actually connect that to practice and go implement them and see how, how the theory compares with the practice. In the spring, um, people take systems programming and engineering. This hits on things like operating systems, network working databases, you'll be writing kernel modules, all that good stuff, and software engineering, which is going to look a lot more object-oriented design, working together in teams on a big project, um, and all the things you would expect from a graduate software engineering class. Um, then, you know, what else you take beyond that? So, so that was five courses I listed. What are your, your other five courses? Um, I'd say that m almost all students take engineering robust server software, um, but beyond that, students kind of spread out and take what they're interested in. Some take mobile app development, others are interested in optimizing and parallelizing code, some take enterprise storage, some of them take my compilers class. Um, a very wide um, array of things. All the classes that are in kind of this uh, pinkish orange color on the slide are ECE classes. The other classes that are in blue, um, which here are, are um, have, have CS in parentheses, are from other departments. These in particular are from CS, and they would be graduate technical electives. Our, another um, area that students are interested in is hardware. When students say they're interested in hardware, there's really a spectrum of what they mean, anything from kind of the computer architecture level all the way down to more the, the, the VLSI level. Um, and so, you know, you can find a, a, a good selection of classes at any of these levels or even um, further down into the device level if you're interested um, at Duke. And I'll talk very briefly about the architecture level because we have, um, we have a lot of really good architecture research um, and classes here. So uh, at that, you'd, you'd probably take um, Advanced Computer Architecture, Advanced Computer Architecture 2, maybe some things like Data Center Computing, Heterogeneous Computer Systems, um, all of these things in kind of the architecture space, as well as um, a lot of the lower level software courses are really good for you if you're, if you're thinking about architecture. So you're probably going to take um, 551, the C++ programming course. You might take systems programming or optimizing code and think a lot about how, um, how the low level software is going to work that's going to interact with the architectures you want to design. I'm now going to move to the things um, offered by our signal processing and robotics group. Um, you can see those, those faculty here. And uh, the biggest area of interest here, of course, is machine learning and big data. So this is an area where really um, lots of, of linear algebra and statistics meets programming. And so for students interested in this, they take um, random signals and noise, which is a graduate probability class. They take 551, the programming class I mentioned before. And they take vector space methods with applications, which uh, delves deeply into a lot of linear algebra needed for machine learning. In the spring, um, there's an intro to machine learning class that's um, ECE 580. There's also a probabilistic machine learning class um, that students would take these kind of cover a few different aspects of machine learning, and then in the the next fall, um, intro to deep learning delves into um, a lot of the things with neural networks and uh, uh, uses GPUs for those. Um, and then beyond those six courses, what do you take? Well, again, it depends a lot on what you're interested in. Some students want a little more of the software slant, so they might take software engineering or some of the other. Um, software courses. Some people might want to specialize in particular areas and take something like image and video processing or textual data uh, acquisition and analysis. Some people might want a little more of the math and theory, so they might take information theory or Bayesian stats. Um, it really depends on what you're interested in, and so you'd pick these courses and, and work with your advisor to figure out what's right for you. Of course, these aren't the only areas we have. They're the ones I'm going to go into in detail here because they're the most popular. Um, we have lots of faculty doing a wide variety of things across um, the entire breadth of, of electrical and computer engineering. So we have photonics, engineering physics, microelectronics, nanotechnology. Um, if you're interested in any of these things, you, you can certainly come and take a lot of really good classes here. Um, and I would, I would encourage you to contact uh, our 
team and, and ask to get in touch with the right people if you need more information about what areas interest you um, in, in those types of things. Um, I mentioned 551, our C++ programming class, and I want to talk in a little bit more detail about that because, as I said, it's a fairly, um, fairly unique class. So this is a very intensive programming class. This is for master students. It's designed specifically for master students, and um, it's not an undergrad intro programming class. Uh, in fact, undergrads aren't allowed in it at all. Some PhD students take it, but it's designed primarily for our master's students. You will learn a lot in this no matter what your background is. So we start from strong fundamentals and build all, uh, everything up on top of that. If you have um, no programming background, this class will be a lot of work. You're going to have to work very hard, but we will start from the start. If you have some programming background, this can still be a really, really good class for you. We have had students who have CS undergrad degrees who've taken this class and said, wow, I'm, I'm frustrated by how hard I have to work. I have to learn so much. I wish I'd learned it this way to begin with. Um, and, and really what we're looking to do is build the fundamentals from the ground up correctly because most people are not really expert programmers when they start and we need you to be an expert programmer very quickly. Um, and you need to be an expert programmer very quickly if you want to go to to a job in software. One of the things that's unique about this class is that we use what's called a flipped classroom. Um, and so, so a typical class that you're probably used to involves lecture where the professor stands up and talks and the students sit in the back of the room and check Facebook or whatever else they might be doing because they're bored. Um, Lots of educational research has shown that traditional lecture classes are a very inefficient way of learning and have shown that, that things where students are, are engaged and active during class time are much more efficient. And so we take that, that, um, that research to heart here and design this around the idea that when you're in class, you're going to be working on programming activities, asking us questions, maybe having a small group discussion, and really in doing something useful and active um, inside class. And so you'll be doing your consumption of information outside of class um, where I've already written down everything you need to know in this book, All of Programming, um, which is, is a very, very big book with embedded videos in it. You'll read a lot, learn a lot, come to class, ask questions, work on things. It's very efficient. Um, and coming in fall 2019, so for those of you who are, are currently applying for next fall, um, we will be having what you could basically think of as an honors section of this. It's going to be called ECE 751. This is for those who have mastery of the material in the first third of the class. Um, and we'll basically go into deeper coverage of the more advanced topics, um, C++, concurrency, um, all of that sort of thing so that you'll have um, even more knowledge coming out of the class. Um, one thing you're probably wondering about is the career outcomes of our students. So I'm going to take a moment and talk about that. So um, this slide shows you information about uh, our students' internships or other summer activities last summer. So the blue in this graph is students who went to um, some sort of you know, in internship in industry where they were getting paid. As you can see, that accounts for most students. Um, the orange in this graph is students who stayed at Duke and did a research or development project. So um, some students are interested in going to a PhD or thinking about going to a PhD. For them, staying and working in somebody's research lab for the summer is much, much better than going to industry because if you're interested in a PhD program, you really want research experience, you want really good letters of recommendation, and so working in someone's research lab is, is the best thing you can do. Other students stayed at Duke um, and did development projects. I generally have a handful of students working on these sorts of things for me um, in the summer. Um, these, these can sort of span a wide range of things um, from, from sort of all areas of software development. Um, and, and you can see um, a list here of a, a, of a variety of the companies that students went to. Um, and at the top of the slide, it notes that Masters of Engineering requires an internship, but many of our Masters of Science students do internships as well. This, the, this graph combines both MS and MN together um, and gives the aggregate numbers for those. Um, this slide shows you 
where the students went for um, some of the internships. Um, and basically one of the, the key points here is that they're really all across the country. So even though we're in Durham, which is on the east coast of the US, um, you know, students are going to, to Silicon Valley. You can see um, on the west coast a lot of a lot of things hitting that Silicon Valley area with LinkedIn, Facebook, Synopsys, Amberella, Microsoft. Um, some students went to China for their internships all over um, based on where they found a good fit. Of course, more important than an internship is your job outcome when you graduate. Here I have got two years worth of data. Um, so one of these graphs shows 2017. And you can see that about 75% of people went into private sector. Um, some, some modest percentage went to PhD, some went into public sector, and some didn't respond. And then the other graph shows um, 20, 2018 graduates. And um, even more of these went into to private sector. We, we, were, we were able to get a better response rate. Um, and um, you know, still a fair number going into PhD. A very small percentage were still looking um, as of when this data was gathered um, a few months back. And a, an also small percentage didn't reply. You can see that the average um, starting salary was 115975 This is only including salary. It doesn't include bonuses or stock options or any of the, the other things like that. Um, and then we, we give some uh, 25th and 75th percentile information there also. And uh, this slide just sort of shows a sampling of um, the large corporations that some of our students went to. You can see a lot of the names that you're probably thinking about if you're interested in, in software or hardware, Facebook, Intel, um, all of these sorts of things. You might be surprised by some of them like General Motors, but smart cars are, are a big deal these days, and so we have some students who've gone there to work on, on software um, related to that. Um, if you're interested in a lot more information, you can go look at the website, and it actually has this little tool that you can filter and, and search um, and see all the, the information you want in sort of whatever, whatever form and fashion. Um, and so you can go, if you just search for, for the career outcomes um, on, on ece.duke.edu, you'll find this tool and be able to, to look at the Tableau data. If you're interested in more information, um, Tony Strimple is our master's program coordinator. You can email him, and he can answer a lot of departmental specific questions or get you in touch with the right person. And if you have um, general uh, admissions and uh, questions about the master's program um, or the engineering school in general, um, Pratt Masters at Duke.edu will get you in touch with the admissions and recruiting team, and they should be able to answer your questions. Um, that's all that I have, so thank you, and we hope that we'll see you at Duke soon.